What's up everybody D-Man back welcome to a brand new video and today we're going to be doing another Monarch news roundup. That's right in this video we're going to be continuing our chronological journey through the development of the Monarch television series which should be coming out like honestly soon but we just don't know when yet. In order to cover some more ground and because this was a really light month, we're going to be covering events that happened in September and October of 2022. So we're making our way. We're almost here. We're almost to this year. Oh my gosh. Ugh. This one's a light one. Not much happened this month. It feels nice to get a light one. Starting out, let's take a look at Isaac Law's Godzilla King of the Monsters poster. We're just doing art again. This one's great. I love it. I love how it gets all four in there. Godzilla, Rodan, Ghidorah, Mothra. That's good. I like the red eye on Rodan also. That was a good touch. And the yellow Ghidorah eyes and the lightning coming out of his mouth. Good stuff. If I try hard enough, I feel like I can identify where some of these are referenced from. Like, it looks like he's probably pulling from the X plus Godzilla 2019. Maybe the 2019 SH Monsters King Ghidorah. Dora, Rodan maybe is NECA, maybe Mothra looks maybe a little um, NECA-esque, I can't tell. But I recognize some of these, I like it. This is a really cool one, I like the poster, I like the framing, I like the way that all the monsters are there together, I like the way he's positioned them all, really good stuff. Next up, these are great, these are really cool, these are from Patsu X, they are the Gods of the King of the Monsters posters, Long Live the King 2019. They're great man, you got Godzilla on these posters with each of his buddies, so Godzilla and Rodan have his own poster that's a really really neat one the Godzilla Ghidorah one is absolutely classic and then the Godzilla Mothra one super pretty with a very 54 posed Godzilla back there that's a very 1954 Godzilla back there I think if I could get any of these framed on my wall I might take the Rodan one the Ghidorah one's really really cool I love the lightning coming down I love how long Ghidorah's necks are it looks great but there's something cool about that Rodan one isn't there I don't know it's pretty awesome I'm a big fan of these I think they're great next up Tristan Tristan J did a Godzilla King of the Monsters set, so he did one for each Titan. We have a Rodan, which is incredible. Oh my god, this looks great. I love the streaking patterns, the glowing eye, it's so good. Mothra is incredible. Oh my god, this is more beautiful than what we see in the movie. The purple and the blue shining through the turquoise wings, that's some iris type stuff right there. That looks so beautiful. I love how cool Mothra looks here with her giant claws. This is such a cool one, I love it. The Ghidorah one great classic Ghidorah with those glowing eyes the lightning shooting out everywhere super awesome super cool stuff I really like this one and then the Godzilla is so fun it's a sea monster Godzilla of course Godzilla swims around a lot but this is just such a cool one with the way the tails wagging in the background and his positioning and the way his mouth's all stretched open with the glowing blue coming out of it as you guys know and as I will continue to say I love it whenever we can get like a mist trail coming out of a Titan's mouth I think it always looks great and then these ones absolutely are incredible these these are almost iconic in their own right because these were spread around so much back in the day because they're so amazing. Norika Benui's Godzilla King of the Monster posters, 1964 style. So of course, recreating the Godzilla King of the Monsters character posters for the Titans with the 1964 designs because of course, Godzilla King of the Monsters uses the same monster lineup as 1964's Ghidorah, the three-headed monster. This Godzilla is just beautiful, beautiful. I love the dorsal spines. I think he's so pretty. It's one of my fave Godzilla designs anyway. So this is such a cool one. I love seeing the retro art. This this is so cool. The background looks great. The Ghidorah one's insane. Makes me really sad that we couldn't get a more classic looking Ghidorah with the hair. The gravity beams look great. I love the moon on his face. It's one of my favorite things about that Ghidorah is that moon crown on his face. So cool. I love this one so much. I miss that Ghidorah design. I would love to see it brought back in a very intimidating form and I think this is great. Rodan's is a lot of fun. That's probably my least favorite Rodan design but I like the art of course because it's very faithful to that old design. But it looks great. I think it's a lot of fun. This is another really well done one. And the Mothra one I think is very creative because of course Mothra is not in adult form in Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster, but she is in adult form in the Godzilla King of the Monsters poster. So to get around that, they have drawn the Mothra larva from 1964 against the background of the 2019 Mothra poster, which was super cool. Already looks beautiful. The coloring is great. Really makes me go back to my idea of getting Mothra and Kong under the Northern Lights because I think they'd be a great
great duo and that'd be a great place to place them. But Mothra is spraying her silk up in the air and it's slowly raining down around her in the shape of her wings. It's so cool, such a creative touch and I love it. Those are all great. I don't know why this was reshared around this time, but Stephen King's Only Godzilla Can Save Us Now tweet from 2014 popped back up around this time. Also, another thing that popped back up around this time was Gormuru Island remembering the Godzilla King of the Monsters Vietnamese premiere and Cinerama Dome takeover. Now, we did talk about the Cinerama Dome takeover on the channel in the past. That was something we covered when it happened, but the Godzilla King of the Monsters Vietnamese premiere is not something I think we discussed. This is crazy. They've got a giant Godzilla statue breathing misty flames down upon the crowd with the destroyed city around him. So cool. Vietnam goes all out for their movie premieres. Of course, their Kong Skull Island one is infamous as their Kong caught fire during the premiere, but this looks great. So cool. Love the Godzilla here. They've learned some lessons. He's not covered in flames. It looks like he's all plastic. They've learned, but it's super cool. So I wanted to bring that back up. This is sort of MonsterVerse adjacent, I suppose. It's American Godzilla. Spiral Studios revealed that they plan to make a Godzilla 1998, assuming they can get the license approved. Now, I don't actually know if they ever got to make this for the Legacy series, but this teaser looks incredible. I always love it whenever the 1998 Godzilla design can get some love because it's not a popular Godzilla design and it's very rare for it to receive high quality merchandise. So I appreciate that it's being featured here and may eventually get a Spiral Studios release. I hope they actually got approval to make this at some point because it would be gorgeous. X Plus Gigantic Series Godzilla 2019 Blue Clear version was revealed. This is a 20 inch Godzilla X Plus figure. He's a very bulky boy. I've held him in person before. I've held the original release in person before, not this blue one. The blue one is of course trying to replicate Godzilla's atomic glow up, although they've taken it much further, putting the blue all over his body. Honestly, it kind of gives like nighttime cold slash underwater vibes, but I like that they tried to take it a step further so that they're not just doing Godzilla, but his spines are blue. They're giving him a blue makeover. Of course, there is a better way to go about this if they had just adapted Godzilla's supercharged state from King of the Monsters, but I guess they felt that that wasn't taking it far enough, which could be fair. This does run you, whew, about $623.58 without shipping, so good luck if you want to get this guy. Now getting into the Monarch television series news. Of course, Monarch's not the final name for the show. The show could be called Monarch Legacy of Monsters or The Legacy of Monarch, depending. Also, check out the new Monarch shirt. Isn't this cool? I like it. I think it's pretty sick. This is an official legendary release featuring everybody's favorite world serpent who will not be turning up anytime soon because it doesn't exist. Andres Holm joins the cast for the Monarch television show. Honestly, I'm not really sure who he'll be playing or anything like that. And I've never really seen his work before, but figured I'd mention it. Along with him, Ryan Cowie joined the cast as someone named Rosie. Rossi, maybe? Rossi? Maybe it's like a Russian character. I'm not sure. I don't know that name. I don't know where that name originates from. That's our casting updates. <laughs> Nothing big. Mia Z. Almas, a director of Paper Girls, 12 Monkeys, and Jessica Jones, and Hiromi Kamata join the Monarch television show as directors of some of the episodes. If I'm not mistaken, maybe I'm misremembering, we'll talk about it in a future video. They might be directing two episodes each. So if the show is 10 episodes, Shackman's doing two, they're covering another four, and then we've got someone else covering two episodes, I believe someone else is covering the finale. I can't remember which director signed on to do that. That leaves us with two episodes who we don't know the director for so far. We talked about the other director in like the last Monarch video, I'm pretty sure. But it's cool to see them joining. I always like getting some fresh female talent in there. It's always a good thing because it spices up the show, keeps things interesting. Of course, that's a very different creative voice being brought to the project than if it was just a bunch of dudes. So we always like to see that. That's also a very diverse casting. Hiromi Kamata, actually, I don't think I saw much American or English work on her IMDb. So potentially she's doing very Japan heavy episodes, which is good. It's good that they're doing that because again, I like having the cultural authenticity to it. That way you're not having like someone who doesn't speak Japanese trying to direct Japanese actors and they have no idea what they're saying. That's good stuff. Also, Paper Girls, 12 Monkeys, Jessica Jones, those are all good things. I think Paper Girls looked good, I thought. I didn't get to see it. My dad and my brother love 12 Monkeys, I'm pretty sure. And Jessica Jones I did watch and it was pretty good. At least the first season of it was. Now getting into the big stuff for the episode and it's really not that big. Remember in the last video how we talked about how Vancouver's Chinatown was being transformed into the San Francisco Chinatown from the Godzilla 2014 film? Well, that did occur, we have some photos of Shanghai Alley, Vancouver being transformed into that San Francisco Chinatown aftermath. Of course, San Francisco's Chinatown was ground zero for Godzilla fighting the Mutos. That's where the Muto nest was. That's where the atomic breath happens. That's where a lot of the major events of that 2014 battle occur. To make it authentically San Francisco, we see newspapers for the Bayside Observer and a metro entrance to Powell Street. A 
Additional photos show the Chinatown aftermath. We see filming was occurring here. We actually have a photo showing when filming was occurring. It says filming was occurring from Monday, October 3rd to Friday, October 7th with the crew prepping during daylight and filming from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. So it's all night shoots. I don't know what exactly this means for the story other than that we are going back to San Francisco's Chinatown. They've done a really good job replicating it. I like the aftermath. I like the paper lanterns being knocked over all over the place. Of course, Godzilla does a big roar to knock those down in the movie, which is a lot of fun. So it looks really good. I'm excited to see it. Looks like they're doing a pretty good job recreating it. Of course, I don't think we're going to be going back to the same street that Ford Brody was on. This doesn't quite look like that at all. But we also see that they put up some big blue screens in the background. So what we could potentially be seeing is somebody investigating the Muto's nest, which was in the center of San Francisco and was, of course, exploded by Ford Brody. Maybe it's Monarch going back there in an attempt to try and figure out if any of the Muto eggs survived. Maybe they harvest some. Maybe some did survive and they harvest them. I don't know. That'd be interesting. Or it could be some of our more ground level characters like Kate or Kentaro or somebody. I think Kentaro's in Japan, so probably Kate. Investigating the aftermath herself. Maybe she sneaks in there Madison Russell style and starts to investigate and snoop around through the rubble looking for clues. That could always happen as well. But I'm excited to go back because we're bringing continuity in. It's important. We're going back to where we started. I like the references to the previous film. That's important to me. And that'll do it for this one. That's all we got to talk about. Like I said, it was a pretty breezy two months. Nothing happened in those two months. Always love it when we get easy months. And uh, I know November 2022 is definitely not one of those. I always appreciate it when we get easy months that we can breeze through. I want to give a huge thank you to all my patrons over on Patreon. If you want to support the Patreon, you can use the link in the description below where you can get early access to content, access to the Discord community, and more. By supporting the Patreon, it directly supports me and this channel. It's the best way to support this channel. And I really, really appreciate it. Thank you guys all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you guys next time for the next one. D-Man out. Thank you.